I think you used the word, it was some kind of electric toothbrush you used that night, which is, was it ultrasonic? Sonicare, yeah. Sonicare. Yeah. Is that different than in the morning? No, uh, I always use the Sonicare. I'll, I do have a manual toothbrush. I use a radius toothbrush. I won't travel with my Sonicare. There's a there's a new study um, that just came out. I, I, I have this love-hate relationship with uh, electric gadgets that we that have batteries in it that we end up throwing into the dump. And these electric toothbrushes don't last a long time. They can be too aggressive. They can cause gum recession. They can be used improperly. Most of us are using a manual toothbrush improperly. If we use a, an electric toothbrush improperly, it just magnifies the damage that is done. But there was a new study out. Actually, it was the uh, from the company that I think uh, actually has the best saliva test or oral microbiome test. And we can talk about that later, but I've referred to it already. Oral microbiome testing is very important for a provider, for a patient. Um, that, that was an interesting study. They've done a lot of studies. And again, these are wonderful studies because all the other electric toothbrush studies, most of them are funded by Philips or Oral-B Braun. Uh, they're done by dental schools. Dental schools, this is a great source of income for them. So if they say too many negative things about these products, they're not going to, this, this will not be reoccurring income for them. Um, and and th that's all true, by the way. And, and it's difficult to get a good, it has been difficult to get a good study on difference between which toothbrush. Is it sonic? Is it oscillatory, rotary? Or is it uh, ultrasonic? They have that category that doesn't work very well. And then, of course, manual toothbrushes. So uh, there are a lot of variables there. Um, but recently, uh, this study was very it was very interesting. It it did it did demonstrate that the electric toothbrush, if used properly, uh, will increase the number of commensal bacteria in the mouth, and that's a good thing. Uh, you want that uh, diversity of population. Too much diversity is actually bad in the oral microbiome. But but uh, most of us don't have that diversity, and we need that. And the sonic care actually was better than the Oral-B. I, I used to recommend Oral-B for younger patients because it was great at removing stain and thinning the pellicle, great for kids. After age 40, the sonic care because it got in between the gums because the gums are receding and there's more chance for bacteria to get caught in there uh, via biofilm or plaque. Uh, but now I'm 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 a fan of any Sonicare or or a knockoff. They're they're all around thirty thousand cycles. But make sure it is actually Sonic. There are a lot of brands out there that claim they're Sonic and they're not actually Sonic. They're subsonic. So so it needs to be about I think it's over thirty thousand cycles per minute is the definition of Sonic. Make sure the toothbrush head is very soft and well made. A lot of the knockoffs have a have a good brush, you know, the motor and all that, but uh, the toothbrush head, the bristle softness and the end rounding, softening, polishing of the bristles is questionable. So, so yeah, I mean, the Sonic Care, they invented that category. Um, and uh, there, you can you can buy a Sonicare at forty dollars, and you can go up to three hundred and fifty dollars. I would not recommend the high end models. You don't need them. It's basically the same toothbrush. All right, we're really going to get into the weeds with each of these because there's a lot of detail with each step here. As you talk about Sonic and the bristles being soft, and you talked about contoured. Again, we're going to get into the weeds here. Is there any natural bristles? For those brushes and how do you feel about that versus a synthetic yeah. i'm assuming and on, on all the electric toothbrushes as far as i've seen they've been synthetic so yeah. talk about it's that. nylon it's nylon and uh, that's a really great question i have not been asked that question i can tell you exactly how i feel about it i'm not happy about it i hate plastic um i try and eliminate plastic in my life uh floss is a a, a big offender in that area but you can buy a, a, a silk floss. It's more difficult to use. Um, uh, if you use floss and it has PFAS in it, those particles are breaking off. Even if it doesn't have PFAS in it, the little micro plastics are breaking off. And where are they going? You you are ingesting them. It just adds to your PFAS load, which is a whole nother conversation. It's so depressing and uh, we need to address that. Uh, but good toothbrushes are nylon bristles, and then they end up in you know the the dump, and they don't biodegrade. So toothbrush bristles used to be wild boar bristles. Uh, they have very coarse hair um, that didn't work very well. That can be very abrasive as well. They didn't last very long. 
Um, nylon can be very abrasive, especially if it's a cheap toothbrush, which I alluded to earlier. If they just cut the bristles, the, the toothbrushes are, it's a nylon, molten nylon in a mold. It gets heated up. Machine comes and has a stack of nylon bristles. It drops it in. It cools quickly, it grabs the nylon bristles, and it goes off to be polished and packaged. Those bristles, if they're just cut, and they're obviously cut evenly, or now they have staggered uh, bristles. I'm not sure how they would make that. They probably put in different sets of bristles at different heights. And by the way, those staggered bristles actually work better according to studies. So if they're all cut at the same height, they may not work as well. But my point is, is that the bristles, each bristle needs a hemispherical end. It's called end rounding or polishing. And because a cut bristle is literally a cylinder, cylindrical piece of nylon, different diameters. They have nano bristles now. But the edge of that cut bristle is sharp. It's a right angle. And nylon is very abrasive. And that can do irreparable, permanent damage to gum height, gum recession, Dentin density um, can cause tooth sensitivity to the point where you can't eat certain things. Your teeth will ache. Uh, it'll really interfere with your daily routine and your day and focus and concentration. Uh, difficult to fix. So you really have to be careful. And then you put that on a oscillatory toothbrush like the Oral-B Braun or, or the, ultra, the sonic toothbrush that's vibrating. And that just accentuates that wear so and then we brush incorrectly we do this sawing motion anyone that brushes in a movie or on a tv series i've i've uh clipped a lot of clips uh i think uh, i have one on youtube of natalie portman brushing her teeth i think it was black swan incredible actress but i think they're all taught to brush aggressively because it's usually during a very emotional scene and but you don't want to brush that way. Uh, you want to jiggle. You want to vibrate. You just with a manual toothbrush. You just want to circular motions. You don't see that on on um, you know on on you know everyday media on how we brush and and that sawing motion really gouges. And remember, it's the same motion back and forth. So over time, this is something you do twice a day. It will literally leave grooves from tooth to tooth, all in the same direction. And then once those grooves are established, then every time you go back with brushing, the bristles are guided into that groove and that wear is potentiated, made worse, it accelerates. So, so to answer your question, we do not have a good alternative to the nylon bristle. And it is a plastic. I wish it wasn't so. I've tried uh, you know, natural versions of it. The, the best thing you can do is not to have to brush. I mean, our ancestors didn't brush. They chewed on chewing sticks. Uh, I think there are people out there that have an excellent diet. They have uh, very healthy saliva. They're not mouth breathing. Uh, they could literally get away with chewing xylitol gum and never floss and brush. I, I have patients like that. And But is that the norm? No. I mean, as long as we have the food that we have, even healthy diets, uh, a lot of our foods, I mean, most of our foods are nothing that our ancestors saw. They're, they're, we're too far gone from that. Hybridized wheat, uh, DNA changes, uh, quality of food, even our fruits and vegetables are not what our ancestors were eating. So so that that is why we now have this Band-Aid. So remember, every time we try and fix something in our society, it's it's not the full step forward. It's a half. It's a full step forward and half a step back. We've introduced microplastics and abrasion into our into our lives because of our chosen diet. All right. So what I think I'm hearing you say is, when it comes to electric toothbrushes, there's no perfect answer for the bristles in the head. What what's the best we can do there? And then take that over to manual and talk about what the best we can do there is. If you're eating well um, and you're pretty healthy, you're not getting cavities, you don't have a halitosis, your gums don't bleed, I would recommend a manual toothbrush. My favorite is the soft uh, head on the Radius toothbrush. It is The handle is recycled, made from recycled products. You never have to replace the handle. You're only replacing the, the head. I mean, so that assuages half of our guilt. Half of the toothbrush ends up in the, uh, in the dumps. Um, and it's safe. I mean, there it's a high-quality bristle. Uh, and um, 
it, it, if used properly, make sure you're checking in with your hygienist. Bring your favorite toothbrush into your dental visit. And there's always time at the end of that one-hour cleaning visit. The hygienists, the good ones, allow for that. That's the oral hygiene instruction, OHI. We have a term for it. There's 10 minutes where we can discuss, you know, you, Mr. Smith, you missed this area. Here's a patient mirror. This is how I recommend you get in there. That's the biomechanics of brushing. Everyone's got their blind spots when it comes to brushing. And and then, but bring your toothbrush so that they can see you in action. Bring bring your favorite floss and demonstrate to them what they're doing. Usually, you're sitting up and you've got the patient mirror. Or they're holding it for you, and they're behind your shoulder, your right shoulder, typically, and they're looking at it. And they can comment. And if you're over brushing, they will catch it. And I would say ninety percent of the time when that happens, I mean, when the patient comes in, ninety percent of the time we have to take their arm <laughs> and just say, "Slow down." Uh, if it's an electric toothbrush, bring in a fully charged version of it and uh, get a demo. I think you'll be surprised. They do have toothbrushes um, in manual and now in electric that if you push too hard, either the motor cuts out or an LED light flashes at you. There is a toothbrush, a manual toothbrush that has a uh, a clutch on it. And I remember them sending it to me. Um, I'm not sure if it's in production or not. I can find out. I think everyone should try that toothbrush at least once. When I picked it up and started brushing, the clutch would break each time. So even I was brushing too hard. That The clutch, which is, it's a breakaway thing. It snaps back and it resets. It's very inexpensive. Um, uh, that clutch, they've measured it, breaks at a very certain hardness uh, or, or force. It's a Newton measurement, uh, and it's very specific and based on studies. I would recommend that everyone try that once. I would say probably 100% of the people that pick that up will be shocked the first time they use it. Like, wow, it only takes that much force to be brushing too hard. And that's not, I'm not talking about the motion of brushing. I'm talking about how much pressure you're applying. So that would be, that would be important. Um, did I answer your question? We yeah, were talking I just about want to close holes. off okay. on when somebody goes to the Sonic, what's the best they can do with a brush head in that case? I would say if your dominant hand is your right hand, use your left hand because you're going to be more delicate. Hold it like, I don't have, yeah, I have a pen here. Uh, don't hold it like this. Hold your toothbrush like this. And and then my Sonicare has, a, as I'm brushing, I'm facing the LED light in the mirror. Actually, when it's dark, which it typically is at night, it just lights up the room. Um, it's a red LED. Thank you, Phillips, for making it a red LED. I don't need white LEDs at night. Um, uh, it lights up, and then it tells me that I'm brushing too hard. So it, it modifies your behavior, and that alone, within weeks, you've got it. Some, for some people, it will be days. And that's a modified behavior that has ramifications for the rest of your life. Your dental bill will be less, less sensitivity to your teeth, uh, better hygiene, could be better systemic health in general. Uh, so so that's, that's what you want to do. You want to be brushing properly with a high-quality head, quality toothbrush, um, and, um, so brushing properly, not pushing too hard and the right motion. And that's kind of a rolling motion with an electric toothbrush. You're going to pick it up. It's got a nice broad oval head and you're going to lay it in the area. And you're just going to move it a little bit and roll it gently. And then you're going to move on. You're going to lift it off the teeth and do that again. You're not going to scrub over back and forth. And by the way, that negates the effect of the sonic bristles, because then you're 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 deadening that frequency by brushing back and forth. So most people are brushing incorrectly with their two hundred dollar toothbrushes. I mean, it's very discouraging. And uh, but Sonicare is a great way to go. Based on these latest studies from Bristle, I was very impressed with that. And again, it's the first time that a study was done based on the composition of the oral microbiome. Before all the other studies, those dental school studies I was referring to, it was based on bleeding points and pocket depths. That's so intangible and indirect. And there's so many more factors at play there. Where with the oral microbiome, the oral microbiome changes within three or four days. So uh, that is more quantifiable. It's more a, a more accurate way of looking at differences in the results of using different products. And I know for, I haven't had the Sonicare, but I've had different electric toothbrushes over the years. And when you go to replace the heads, there's different choices. And some of them have like Disney characters for kids and things yep. like that. <laughs> when it comes to the Sonicare, is there a certain one though, like a certain softness we're looking for, a certain bristle? You mentioned the contour. Good question. 
again, getting really specific for people out there that want to take this to the max? No, no, I love it. And it's a great question. And it is, in fact, I just had to replace my heads and I went to Amazon and I was completely overwhelmed with the choices and I wanted to make sure I got the right thing. So I had to do some research and then go to the Phillips site and, and find out that I, so always get the softest toothbrush head you can get, get extra, look for extra soft, look for gum brush, or if you have periodontal disease or a brush for sensitive teeth, these are all brushes that have a softer, maybe it's thinner, uh, a softer bristle so that it gives quicker when you apply force. Uh, and then there's the, and I alluded to this earlier, there's the grouping of the, of the bristles. And that's confusing as well. So if it's just a toothbrush that is cut and, and the density pattern is even, that's an old style toothbrush. And there are a lot of them still out there. Uh, I would go for a, 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 rolly, a rolling kind of, some tufts are higher than the other. That's They call that a staggered pattern. It can be oval. Stick with a smaller toothbrush head if you can. Most people don't do well with the big brush heads because they bump into anatomical features back here and they don't clean around their lower second molars and upper second or third molars if you still have them. Um, and that can be a problem. Um, and that staggered bristle pattern and grouping patterns all of those have scientific basis. There are studies that support that. So look for a complex pattern, soft bristles. The way to look at bristles, if you're looking at a toothbrush, let's say you're at your friend's house and you're borrowing a toothbrush and he gives you a cheap you know, knockoff. If you can see shiny spots on the end of the bristles, that is an unpolished bristle. They should be opaque and very dull. They should not have a shiny finish. So put, put on your loops or get your magnifying glass out. You can see this under normal lighting uh, in a um, in a bathroom, look at the, compare the shininess of the bristle, the shaft, to the end of the tuft, and there should be a remarkable, a noticeable difference. It should be a matte finish. And that's a great way to tell if you've got, so staggered, grouping, different grouped bristles. A lot of it gets gimmicky, of course. They've got a big grouping at the end to help poke in this spot and that spot. Try and ignore that, but go extra soft, grouping, staggered bristles, and pick a manufacturer that has uh, is reputable and has been around for a long time. And then, of course, really, all of that is important, but your technique is the most important. And try and get a toothbrush that warns you if you're brushing too hard, whether it's manual or electric. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. Most acidic drinks like kombucha and a lot of mineral waters, Perrier, for example, they're pretty low. Coffee, wine, iced tea, my favorite. Those start off at a low pH. And if you're drinking a lot of that,